So I could start again if you want. Yeah, we can miss the characters part and just start with the. Um, sure, if you don't. If you no, don't mind. I don't mind. It was just to help you know me better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so here we have. Um, let's see if I can close this. And you don't need to see this. Okay. So this is a copper coil. Let's see if there's more pictures here. Yeah. Copper coil, yep. Yeah. Uh, now, when I nano coat uh, the copper coil, and this one was nano coated, yeah, there we go. How I did this one is I dipped it in salt water and I hung it outside for at least nine days. And okay. I had wind and rain and snow. Now, there are other ways to do it. Um, but I don't really like to use caustic. But one of the caustic works quite well, and which is what lye is made from, is from wood ash. So, are you? Do you have a wood stove by any chance where you are? Uh, no, not. Okay. But I can uh, burn some wood in the backyard. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, perfect. And you can also use the wood ash or the, if you get like a little piece of wood and then some of your favorite uh, dried leaves and dried root. Let's say you have certain plants that you really resonate to. Um, if you're not in a hurry, um, then you can burn, like I have geranium leaves that dry up and fall and I always keep them. So what you would do is you would take the ashes, put them in, in a bottle, and pour a water on that, and let everything settle. Then okay. you take from the top of that water, and you can put that in another jar. If you want it, you're going to um, want to strain the ashes from the water. Okay as much as you can and let them dry. Wait, wait, am I doing that right? <laughs> well, see, it's not the way I do it all the time. I, I just use seawater because I'm right by here. So nano coating is, is uh, coiling up a uh, coil wire with uh, some seawater and you leave it, left it outside for like about nine days? Yeah. Okay. Um, you can do it also on your electric burner. If you've got an electric stove. Do you have an electric stove or a gas stove? Gas stove. Oh, that might actually be better. If, if you've got a good pair of tongs, you can, uh, if I had a gas stove, that's what I'd be doing. Um, but you have to make sure you've got good gloves and tongs. You can fire. Um, do you have a propane? Uh, thing as um, propane. Uh, what are those called? Propane gun. You know those things for. Um, are you in oh, an apartment or a house? Uh, an apartment. Okay. Actually, no. We have a. <laughs> we have an electric stove. Oh, okay, good. You cook a lot, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, if you, have an, <laughs> if you have an electric stove, it's yeah. better because you can do this in an hour. Well, this kind of coil, you the one that this is made from, you wouldn't be able to do in an hour because it's a little complicated. But yeah. you can use just, a, I've got other pictures. Let me show the other pictures. Really simple, simple coils that you could start with. This is so cool. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun, my brother. I, it's like I'm. I never studied chemistry or any of that stuff at, at school. But yeah. I, so here's an easy one. Uh, I'm just hoping I have the whole thing so you can see how easy it is to make this one. Okay. So this is just taking a, um, and, and work with um, sacred numbers. So a sacred length, to remember, is 20.6. And it can be 20.6 inches, or it can be 20.6 centimeters, or it can be 20.6 millimeters. Um, 
and anything either half of that or double that or whatever sure. but work with that when you're cutting your lengths and magic so 20 points that. So, and also when you make a coil yeah um on a 12 inch long uh, copper coil you can make 12 coils so each coil is about an inch in diameter okay and like it takes up so know that when you're doing your straight pin you're always going to have a central stylus they call it or lead pen pin this one see that i'm yeah. hoping there's another picture i can show you better yeah okay so that's your lead pin and at the top, you're going to curve it around like a um, shepherd's hook. Do you know what I mean by a shepherd's hook? No. Uh, okay, like a question mark or, uh, or an S-curve. Okay. okay. Uh, I, I will see if I have some pictures that will actually show you that. Let's see. Let's see. Is there anyone? Uh, this is an experiment that went wild. You see this? See how dark this? This is called. I think you have a lot of fun with it. <laughs> oh yeah, man. It's, well, you know, I, I'm on my own here, so I am my chief entertainment and explorer. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm locked here. I can't get out of here because there's no public transportation, and uh, none at all. It doesn't exist where I am. Oh. I'm totally dependent on people. Although I've put out to the universe, I'd really like to have a good bicycle. That uh, mind you, there's big hills. So you don't want to ride your bike on my highway because uh, anyway, blah, blah, blah. it will. It it's good for being isolated. Let me see if I can. Find it. <laughs> uh, oh well, there's a good picture of that extra coil there. So just you can get adventurous. Um, and I have not tried to burn this on the stove, but I don't see why this wouldn't burn any better than this, you know? So you mm -hmm. can try it if you wanted to get fancy, but where is the easy one to show you? So do you burn it before you, um, you put it in the uh, salt water? Uh, only if that, yes, you would. Um, there's kind of like a shepherd's hook there, but... Uh, Trying to see if I can get past it. Here, here. Ah, there. Okay. There we go. See, this is a shepherd's hook. Or this is a shepherd's hook. In other words, it's got to be a clo almost closed. Okay. And what that does is it keeps all the energy flowing down. Right. And ideally, you're going to turn everything the same way. I always turn it to the left which is known as anti-clockwise, but I hear different stories from different mentors and, and knowledge seekers, and they do it many different ways. Normally, it's to the left because you want it to be uh, anti-clockwise. So it's because that's gravitational. Okay. And you're, you're trying to pull this energy in to heal yourself or to create... And the, the other one will automatically become magnetical. The outer one will always be magnetical, and the inner one will be gravitational. That's just the way it works. Just keep always wind them the same way. Whichever way you decide to wind them, just wind them the same way. And then don't worry about it, because it is so much fun. They will teach you. If you listen carefully, they'll start to give you ideas. Um, so I'll pull back on this. This is silver guns, a beautiful color in here. This is very thick silver. I used to make silver jewelry. So this is actually like a really good quality silver. Whereas over here, this was what's called silver wire and it was silver plated. And I guessed, and I think I'm pretty guessing, guessed right, that it would be plated on um, zinc. Now, and why I guess that is because zinc um, is very, very fluffy like this and has a great zinc gun that's being created. It's very fluffy. 
and it likes to flow. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. And uh, these I just did maybe three or four days ago. So you see, it doesn't take long wow. for it to happen. And these two pens, I burned. I burned on my electric stove. And when I say burned, you have to be careful not to burn them, actually. You want to move them around. You can right. have two or three of them at the same time. Um, this is probably 16 or 18 gauge wire, which is a lot easier on the hands than 14 gauge. And you can get that at home hardware or um, Home Depot. Yeah. Just try not to get, a lot of the stuff is covered with a little plasticky material that uh, will eventually nanocope, but it only delays the nanocope process. So if it means you have to take it out of an insulation, it pretty much guarantees you that it's not going to be covered with any You know what I mean? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. I understand. I didn't know anything about copper wire until I started. <laughs> so the best I'm glad you're recording this, so I'll go over it again. <laughs> no problem. Um, uh, the best place to get copper wire is um, electric, a, a, store, a store that sells electrical supplies. Yeah, we have a, a couple here. Cool. Because you will find that if you get, um, oh, what is it? Well, you're probably stronger than I am. And I love working with you. So maybe the best place for you to start is with 14 gauge wire. And you can get 10, 30 feet of it, or okay. 30 meters rather, or wait, 10, 10 meters, right. 10 meters for, yep. oh yeah, you're in the States, sorry. Um, yeah, 30 feet of it for about $25 up in Canada. And it's electrical wire, you get 14 times 3. Uh, and 14 is the game, and it says there's three wires, in it, but you'll find it's actually four. So that gives you lots of wires if you have an extra 25 box. It, yeah. it, it kept me going for a long, long time. <laughs> I'll probably make something small to start with. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Now, if you go to Home Depot, they will sell um, rolls of 18 gauge wire and 20 gauge wire. And yeah. start there to see what happens. Be, be adventurous. Yeah. Jump in and you will be amazed. Uh, so there's that wire with. And you see, it's not that complicated to make the extra uh, oil. I use a knitting needle. Use a um, um, a pair of uh, what is that? Oh, a screwdriver, a long handle, a long, uh, not handle, but you know the length of the screwdriver. Yeah. They're really, really good to make your coil. I think that's it on the test tube. Uh, let's see what else I have. Oh, now I'm going to look at it. Oops, sorry. It's going to be a little bit here. Coming back. I did want to talk about it. Um, yeah. It makes me so happy. <laughs> Because the, the, I put that picture all over the place. Because when I look at this picture, it's like looking at a natural periodic table of elements. Now, I don't know anything about a natural periodic table of elements. <laughs> this is what the rain did. And yeah. after this coil had been outside for about five days. And this is the, the brilliance of what Kesh is teaching us, is understanding how the elements work. And 
everything goes in a circular or spiral or spherical way. In nature, there are really no straight lines. So if you can remember that, then the way those drops stayed, now those drops stayed on that spiral for maybe three or four days. And then it got really cold and they froze on there. Yeah, and, that looks pretty cool on it. Yeah, well, they're not ice. Not They're not ice. They're close to it, but they're not. There. And one of the things, uh, it just blows me away. When I see it, I go into bliss. <gasps> so every little drop of water I see now just sends me into a realm that I'm happy to go to. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to stop that here, but I just want to remind you, remember spherical. And... Um, then I'll go to the reactor so you can see how easy it is to do reactors. Yeah, I can certainly do that. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, no, I gotta go to share screen. Share screen. I happen to really like vector equilibrium. And I'm not saying you use them, but they really turn my crank. <laughs> um, and I'm trying to make something that I don't need to plug in that will plug into nature. This is probably, this was the first little one I ever made. Um, so you see, you make coils, double coils. Do you know how to do that? Do you know the numbers? Do you want me to teach you? I forget. I won't tell you about the vector equilibrium until you played for a while. But okay, here's a simple one, and it was too big to fit properly. But you can squeeze and play with them. Um, Josh does not pay attention to the spiral. I think mm -hmm. he's missing out on something because one of the things I noticed about the uh, uh, copper is that when you make them into spirals, they amplify everything. So just remember that this is okay. We around, 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 around. Ah. Oh, and the animals love the stuff. They just love this stuff. They're always around. So here's one that I made. You may have seen this picture somewhere before. But no. Oh, okay. So what this is is uh, if you count it, this one, two. I don't even remember how many there are in here. But let's say my normal numbers are. 57 and, no, not 57, 54 and 36. Um, but any um, number that's divisible by 9 is the perfect number of turns to make on your coils. So most of the pens I make have 18 coils on them. Do you want to just focus on the pens and forget the reactors for now? Or do you want to yeah, learn? Whatever, whatever is uh, very basics for me. <laughs> okay, well, okay, well, then let's go back to the pens. But again, here's my love of the water. I mean, that little, that little thing shone for days and days and days. I was just like, oh, my God. None of them. Okay, stop there. I'm going to go back to the coils. So, You're probably at chapter seven right now, and I'm like, I'm in chapter one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go back to the coils. Um, <laughs> see, where was that picture? That was a really good really one. Uh, sorry. I should have gone through this a little bit more clearly. <laughs> Okay, let's go through here. So this is just, uh, I guess you can't see it. There you can. Okay. Let's say this is 20.6 centimeters long, including yeah. the turn at the top. And then you can take another piece, or you can take that one that you bring up to 20 points and twist it. And then twist that same length around 18 times. I could show you okay. if you want me to see it, but you play. You know what? When you have copper in your hand, yeah. it will teach you. Just 
um, put it through your thumb and your forefinger and your fingers and just tell it you love it. And it will, it's an element. It will communicate with you. It's amazing stuff, Hugo. I mean, we've all been told, oh, no, 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 no. These things are alive and well and want to teach you. So I'm just giving you a hint. Hold the copper in your hands when you get some. Make some lead pens or styluses cut at 20.6 centimeters or 20 points. Well, 20.6 inches, you'll never find a test tube that long. Oh, you might. Get some kind of vials with a lid. Some kind of what? Vial. Okay. In, or a container. Because I think they're working so well for me because they're so in small, the containers I'm working with. And it's like a test tube. So if you can get test tubes of any kind, minor plastic, you can use glass ones. I just can't find them nor have money to buy them. But these are all old big containers. If you have um, any kind of container, a lid that are see-through so you can see what you're doing, mm -hmm. then just put that in with a mixture. Of, if you're using sea salt, it's about 10% to distilled water or rain water or as pure water as you can get. When I first started, all I had was my well water. And I have no idea what's in my well water. But I've lived on it for 20 years, so I think I'm fine. Um, and because I just can't afford distilled water. And then we were told we could use ocean water or, or seawater. And I have plenty of that around me. So I've been using that ever since. Um, don't think you're going to have access to ocean water in Middletown, but you never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I, have to, uh, put you... I don't think you want it from the Hudson River somehow. I think that would not be a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I could get some uh, Himalayan salt. <gasps> oh, yes. Oh, that's one I can show you. Oh, yeah, it's not in there. Let me show you that. See how it's in there. Okay. Because I had Himalayan salt and my brother... It went nuts. It's like it's possessed. <laughs> it, really, it really was. Um, where is it? Uh, where did you go? Where did you go? Here. Okay. Check this out. So this is a Himalayan salt um, lamp that has a USB plug on it that I've never plugged in. And this is a black glass ashtray that my son got from some blues club many, many moons ago. And I noticed that this salt was very attractive to this ashtray. I have no idea why. But it covered the ashtray. And I had some copper coils in there. And if you look closely, you'll see that that is CUO guns, that, that bluish Turkish turquoise color, mm -hmm. your CUO. And eventually this will become covered like that. Wow. That color. Yeah. And it doesn't take too long. And all you'd have to do, so yeah, I would recommend if you've got Himalayan salt. Yeah. Take, um, I can get some from a store. Yeah, yeah. If you can, I have no idea if it's going to be as powerful as this little lamp is, but who macro? It really does something. And I have some pictures. I can, uh, go find that picture for you. Um, because I gave the piece away to someone who uh, really needed some CUO. If I can find that. Where did it go? Here it is. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for letting me learn how to do this better, too. So you're helping me. As much as I may be helping you, you're helping me. So this little figure eight was in that ashtray. Do you see how that's covered? Yeah. And I love working with infinity. Like, I just follow my own resonance. Whatever resonates to you, like, you'll get these little, mm, I get nurturing, encouraging messages. And I just, I go, what a great idea. and I follow them. So you may notice that you'll start getting those too. And if you look at the bottom, it's creating a fair amount of CUO at the bottom. 
So I took that and just added it to a pen, stuck it in a test tube or bio, and presto, I have an ever making CUO natural machine. And all you would do from this is take the, the water at the top, and, and if you, you could shake it up before you take it. So shake it up really, really good so some of that CUO powder goes throughout the water. Take a syringe and put that uh, water in another vial. Add some uh, fresh water, whatever kind of water you, you drink. Put that in there. And then you could make yourself a CUO pad, which is really good for deep wounds. Um, do you know, I know you probably didn't know this, but it used to be that the operating tables were made from copper because copper is a really incredible disinfectant, antibacterial, antifungal, anti-anything. No, I didn't. Yeah. Wow. So, and then they changed them to stainless steel, which is the best spreader of all those things. They're, same with doorknobs. A copper doorknob is, you won't catch germs from a copper doorknob, but you would catch it from a steel one. Yeah, amazing what what we've lost is knowledge. Right? And silver too. If you have silver, anything like a silver spoon, silver, eat with that because it also protects you. Yeah, the rich eat silver. <laughs> I know you go. Oh my God, unfair. But anyways, that's the way it is. So that's what Himalayan salt will give you as a color. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah. And so if you have some of that, now to make the CUO, I mean the CO2, I, I believe Himalayan salt will give you um, CO2 as well. But you got to make sure you got some really pure zinc. I didn't add any zinc to this. So to make CUO, you need nano-coated copper plus copper. To make uh, CO2, you need nano-coated copper plus zinc. Okay. And yeah. to make CH3, you need nano coated copper plus steel or iron if you have any. And that because the steel will eventually decompose to iron. But if you got an iron, like you got a nail somewhere, you'll skip the time it takes to transform the steel to uh, iron. Yeah. Can, we re can you repeat that again, the uh, CO2? Yeah, the CO2, it takes a nano-coated, which means either burnt nature-wise or with wood ash or with uh, um, your electric stove or with fire. Um, right. So you've got that nano-coated pen. Yeah. And then you would need um, a zinc wire either wrapped around the stylus. Okay. Um, and, and try to get the lead, like try to always keep them connected somehow. So if you're, when you're making your coils, don't make them so tight that you wouldn't be able to feed a piece of metal, uh, like so, uh, zinc or silver or whatever it is you might want to investigate. Okay. Up right up the middle of it. Oh, I see. You know okay. what I mean? Okay, yeah. like if I can show you again. Oh, not there. Oh, that was that silicon. Oh, isn't that amazing? That blew me away when that thing grew in there. It's like, holy mackerel, I created life. So this reddish color is the CH3. And the CH3 is from the, what is it again? That's from uh, nano-coated copper and iron. And iron. Iron, yeah. Copper and iron. Through this. Oh, just to show you how harmless CO2 is, the moths love it. Oh, they just love it. The moss? Moss. The butterflies. Night butterflies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Put that picture there. Um, sorry, how come it's in here? I, I'm going to stop here. What am I looking for again? Uh, oh yeah, I remember. Sorry. 
too many pictures. I do like taking pictures. It's kind of my only way of recording things. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, here they are. Uh, okay, back to so here we are again. You see how I was able to get that silver wire right up to the top here? Can you see it hanging through there? Yeah. And that's yeah. what you want to do is you want to make it all connected to, to give it the, where it wants to flow, which is to the downwards. Right? You don't want it going upwards, you want it going downwards. Now, I gave a bottle of one of these to a friend of mine because he's got really bad pain. And if I gave him this bottle, I didn't give this one, I'm giving him another one. It should help him relieve the pain just by putting the whole bottle over his belly, not the content, just holding the bottle. So, okay. yeah. Did you see how you do it? You just wrap it and wrap it and wrap it. You see how it goes from. Um, Anti-clockwise. Anti, yeah, to the left. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not hard. That's what I recommend to start with, because then you go, "Oh my goodness!" And remember, they're alive. They, they hear you. They understand your thoughts. At some point, they make themselves visible to you in ways that you won't imagine. And I'm having a gas. What I'm learning. What do you mean? I'm going to be able to see some coast? No, not ghosts. Uh, more like little light, little, little round light spheres. <laughs> no, 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 no ghosts at all. Well, here's the thing. This is a really, really important thing. You're working with very powerful energies that are just a reflection of your soul, your own soul. So nano copper and zinc wire in that one right there it creates CO2. Yeah. And CO2, what is? And you said that's an energy giver. Uh, no, that's CH3. CH3 gives you energy. Oh, okay. Um, but CO2 is actually calms you. Um, it settles your emotions. Okay. Calm and and it takes pain away. Ah. Yeah. I'm killing you. No, yeah. really fat. It, it, it might cold to the touch at first. If you make yourself a CO2 pain pad, just from taking some of the water yeah. at the top out, diluting that, putting it on a piece of paper towel, putting that in a... Uh, a, a freeze uh, yeah, a ziplock bag take the mm -hmm. out and put that make two of them put one on the front and the back of an area that's in pain it's yeah. gone it's amazing and you can sleep with that wow. yeah i used to have sciatic nerve problems on my lower left side that would really i mean would cripple me and um when I started doing this, like I haven't had that pain ever since. Wow. Now, the best part though, Hugo, is that we don't need any of this. You can do it all in your mind. And why I say that is because I hadn't done any of this before. And I had a really, really bad impacted tooth and jaw issue going on in my head. And I simply imagined I had a copper plate in my left hand and a zinc plate in my right hand and that I put myself in alignment with the nitrogen and the hydrogen elements out here in the air. Right. And I said to myself, well, I'm in alignment so all my pain should be gone and it was. That was all my imagination and my focus. So just to let you know, yeah. this is just to remind us of our own power. That's why if we think evil thoughts, these things will mess with your head like you will not believe. And they will amplify your evil thoughts. 
<laughs> or they will, well, in other words, you will destroy yourself. And which is because you're too full of evil thoughts. Right. And so it's kind of like a little good, hello, where are you going? A little wake up call. It's your soul communicating through the elements that are here. And from, from what I know about you, Hugo, you've got one beautiful soul. You'll have no fear of your soul. Thank you. And your soul, it's, it's, it's just you're communicating with that aspect of you that's always known everything. And we've been manipulated and programmed to be pieces of garbage and worth nothing. And we know that's farthest from the truth. But it's so well indoctrinated and programmed in us that it's easy to forget that we are incredible beings. So these elements are here to help you remember that. And basically, we don't need them, but because we're so far behind in the whole garbage with border names and everything else, um, yeah. this is like a little kickstart from Mama Earth and Papa Sun and all that really does exist to remind humanity who we are. And these little experiments just show you, we, I mean, we never see this stuff in the air, but it's there. And now we know how to create it. And then we realize we don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think for me right here, for the recording purposes and yes. going back and learn, uh, it might be enough, enough for me. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stop.